for episode number 104 of the Cozy Corner of Cinema. This is being recorded on Monday, March 25th, 2024 at 12.30 p.m. And I haven't been outside yet today, but it's a little hard to gauge the temperature because it's a little chilly out, it seems like, but then I'm also getting a bit of sweats. I guess it could be the uh, long sleeve shirt as well, I don't know, but it's kind of hard to gauge. But either way, errands will have to be ran today, so we'll figure that out when we figure that out. But it's been interesting the past couple of days, sort of uh, the temperature sort of um, being uh, inconsistent where, you know, uh, during the day it's, it's fairly, it's a little cool, but it's still like, you know, you see people driving around like with the windows down and stuff. You see people, you know, uh, uh, with the wind blowing through their hair. And then as it gets colder on into the night, it's uh, uh, far more egregious than it just being simply cold. It's like, it's like real gnarly, man. you got to really layer up. And uh, so make sure you're dressing appropriately. Make sure you're, uh, you know, if you're in an area where it's going to get really cold or it's going to get really hot, that you either have, your, you know, some heavy winter jackets or you have uh, T-shirts or, or tank tops or anything of the sort, man. Just making sure that uh, you are prepared for any of the elements. It's been windy as hell the past couple of days, man, I tell you. I had to run. I had to run out the other day, and it was windy as hell, and it was raining as hell, man. I tell you, the I, the, the damn umbrella was trying to get away, but I was gripping that thing like it was. You know, my life was depending on it, man. I, the, my hat almost went flying a couple times. It was a whole gnarly situation, but uh, it's great to have the rain, man. It's great uh, not only driving in the rain, being safe, of course, and not going too fast because you know you don't want to be slipping on the rain if your tires aren't up to par. But as well, you know, going to bed and you still hear the thunderstorms outside and the rain outside. It's just a level of coziness that can't be put into words. You kind of just have to experience it for yourself. You know, I have very fond memories when I was a kid being, um, you know, uh, uh, being in my bedroom. And it, it was like a Friday after school and uh, it was raining hard outside and I was laying in bed watching uh, Halloween on TV. I remember it was playing on AMC and I can actually still, I have the, the image in my head of, of the whole setup and, uh, you know, laying in bed and the being in the darkness, you could hear the rain outside and the TV's on. It must have been around, uh, it must have been around October or, or may have even been Halloween. I actually have no idea, but it's such a great uh, sort of memory that every time I, uh, I think about, you know, these great kind of rainstorms or everything about like Halloween, you know, I always come back to such a, um, a moment like that that normally you would perhaps maybe take for granted but then in the long run you kind of realize just sort of how sentimental and how sort of important it was to you and in, in sort of just developing who you are you know just these kind of core ideas and core memories that uh really kind of um un unwittingly sort of give you a different mindset of just like oh no i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna take these moments for granted i'm really gonna savor them and and make sure they last as long as they can, you know, to embellish it. But uh, anyways, it's been a very, very busy past couple of days. It's, uh, that's why this is the first episode in a little while that's actually coming out on a Monday. Because um, uh, Friday to Sunday, I didn't have any opportunity to uh, record, let alone, um, you know, put this into a video and, and get it out on YouTube. You know, it's been very busy on top of... Uh, I've, you know, fallen behind a bit on the reading and writing. Uh, that's definitely taken a hit. I'm just about finished with this damn book. And... Um, but I got a little bit more to go, and I just haven't had an opportunity to finish it. As well as writing, I, I get into uh, these patterns where I can get a lot out at once, and then I don't touch it for a couple of days. And, and I've mentioned before, people have different uh, sort of ways they write. You know, some people have different methods, and um, some people, uh, you know, write every single day. They write even just something down, or some people, they do it in bouts. And, uh, I mean, ideally, I try to write every day, but sometimes it's just, it's just uh, like these past couple of days, it just hasn't been happening. I've only been able to get a couple sentences out that aren't filler, you know, you don't want to be like just, just putting whatever on there, you want to actually have it mean something, you know, you don't want to, because then you're going you're gonna to go back and read it, be like, what the hell is I talking about, man, you delete it, and it's just, uh, it's just nonsense, but everybody's got their own, own way of doing it, and that's what's, uh, that's what's so great, you know, is that uh, whatever, uh, you know, results get you, uh, whatever uh, uh, best method gets you the best results, I should say. Um, but with that said, moving on from there, um, so March is coming to an end, and I think that the Kino Lorber sale is happening soon. I was looking online at the Blu-ray forums, um, because I could have sworn that they normally have a, um, a March Madness sale, but some people are speculating that it'll be at the end of the month leading into April, uh, so keep an eye out on that. I haven't actually, I looked at it a couple days ago, I don't know if there's been any updates, uh, since, but either way, uh, if you are curious about that, definitely keep an eye on it. Um, but uh, I wanted to say as well, uh, let's see here. Sorry, hold on. 
So I actually went and paused this briefly so I could take a look at the form and see if there were any updates, and it looks like the sale will be starting this Thursday, the 28th. Uh, there are already some titles up on the website, but the sale prices are not there yet, and I think, uh, well, on the on the form it says from the Kino Lorber Insider, uh, the list of titles are not final and the sale won't start until Thursday. So if you're listening to this, uh, keep an eye out on that. Uh, it'll last probably about uh, a couple weeks or so. I, I always I forget how long they normally last, like a month or so or a couple weeks. But um, definitely got some. They got some good stuff coming out with two for four Ks and stuff. It's great to see um, like Bad Lieutenant coming to four K. That's great. Um, Cry Baby coming to four K, uh, which isn't one of my uh, my favorite John Waters films, but it is still good in its own right. Um, and I think that for uh, the right price, I'll definitely be, be uh, picking that up at some point. I think Dust Devil just got announced for a 4K as well. That was out of print for a little bit, a little while, but uh, that'll that'll be coming as well. Um, I don't know the release dates on those, but just worth um, keeping an eye out for sure uh, this upcoming Thursday of what will be on sale and what won't. Actually, Alphaville as well. John Godard is getting a 4K, so that's great, adding to the collection of uh, Godard 4Ks of Breathless and Contempt. So that would be picked up. Absolutely, that's one of... Uh, one of Godard's stronger films. I think it's a really excellent film. Definitely in uh, his top, uh, maybe top five, I would say. I'm trying to think. I mean, if the one off the top of my head, I'm thinking like Pierre LeFou, uh, Weekend, um, Band of Outsiders, uh, Contempt. Uh, yeah, maybe Alphaville would be in there. Yeah, I think I'd feel confident putting that in the top five. Definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it already, even if you're not a fan of uh, some of Kadar's work, the eras that he goes through, the cycles. Uh, I think that you could be a fan of a certain era and not a fan of another one. Like, if you're not a fan of the earlier stuff, like Breathless and Le, Le-, Le-, Le- Petit Soldat, uh, then you can still be into, like, Weekend or um, Le Chinois or, um, like, Alphaville, you know, different kind of uh, eras that he would go on to do. And actually, as well, I think that I saw they were putting out... Um, uh, Godard's last short that he did, or like a collection of shorts or something like that, it was a um, trailer for a film that uh, will never exist, I believe is what it was called. Um, I think that's what it's being part of, or it was some sort of collection they were doing. I mean, because um, I don't remember, I mean, if his last film was uh, the image book, at least the last feature, I know that's a different kind of uh, film for his, that's more of just like a, uh, I don't even know how to really even describe it it's like not not even quite like a slideshow it's, it's sort of just like um an experimental sort of uh actually i'm looking here um uh, yeah so the image book was his last feature and then uh trailer trailer of the film that will never exist phony wars um from 2023 which i think it was released posthumously um yeah his last one but trailer for a movie that will never exist was a series of collages on what appears to be photographic paper and is about belgian surrealist poet charles pilsner uh, who was expelled from the Communist Party in 1937. This is about 20 minutes or so. Um, so I'll definitely have to be keeping an eye on this when it is available. And I think the one they're actually releasing is Godar Cinema, which is a documentary about... Uh, having just turned 91, he's made more than 140 films. We hate him as much as we worship him. Where does this aura come from? From legendary films, of course, but also from Godard himself. That was from 2022. And he died in 22, I think. 22 or 21. He died in 22, on September 13th, 2022. Yeah, I've talked about that book uh, I read a little while ago. Um, that I always blank on the name. I think it's, it's just called Godard, but I forget who wrote it. Um, that uh, was a really fascinating look into the complicated sort of life of Godard, sort of uh, how he could be very... Um, loving, but then very cruel. Um, he was very, uh, very much looking out for himself and wasn't uh, afraid to kind of throw people under the bus and, and talk bad about uh, colleagues and stuff. He's, an, he's a very interesting guy, and I think people have really strong opinions on his um, on his filmography. And it's funny, I look up Godard book and I can't even find it because it's just such, it's just Godard giving me, giving me all these other books. And um, yeah, I mean, I talked about it a little while ago actually on the show, so maybe um, you can look back and. Uh, you can see where uh, I, I talked about that. But that was a really, really fascinating look into the complicated kind of relationships that he had, especially with uh, Anna Karenina and um, the woman from uh, Ahuzar Balthazar. Or, I always say that name wrong. I don't actually know how to fully say it. I've heard it pronounced like five different ways. Um, the Brisson film, um, that actress who I always forget her name, uh, but um, you can look that up. I'm not going to look it up now. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that was sort of a little bit of a tangent there. Um about the upcoming 
Kino releases, so that is very cool. And also the you know, other Godard releases as well. But um, anyways, uh, that new the new episode of People Pictures will be recorded this week. I've been, like I said, I've been behind on uh, some things lately, and I was intending to have that up by now, but I haven't even, I haven't even had an opportunity to record that. Um, I had to get this one out first, and then I'd do some other things. So uh, that'll be out uh, sometime this week. I got pretty much everything all together for that. And I will, you'll see it when it pops up. A uh, ex, uh, really excellent film to be talking about, so looking forward to going uh, more in depth on that. It's going to be a really, uh, really good episode, I think. And there's some other titles that uh, will be done at some point. I mean, the great thing about with a show like this is that I don't really have a, I don't have a schedule. I mean, uh, Cozy Corner is the only one that I have something, uh, you know, something close to a schedule on this. Right? I, I want to get these out ideally from Friday to Monday. Um, but sometimes you can, you know, just get them out later. So, you know, there's been times to get them out on Tuesday or Wednesday just because the circumstances don't allow, um, you know, don't allow me to uh, be able to sit down here for, for a half hour and get this out. But here we are now. It's great. Um, but look out for that new People Pictures later on this week. And uh, speaking of great filmmakers, uh, filmmakers were still going, I should say, because, you know, Kadar was making films up to his death. He was, he was, a, he was a machine. Uh, we have two new films from Vim Vendors this year. I just saw his newest one. Uh, I actually, I don't know which one is technically released first, because um, he had a documentary and he had a narrative feature uh, this year. So he had uh, Perfect Days, which has been getting a lot of attention, a lot of talk. Um, that's going to be on Mubi actually fairly soon, I think, within the next month or so. Um, that is available on video on demand now. Uh, you can like rent it on Amazon. Um, so it is available. Uh, right now for about six bucks. Um, or if you have a movie, you can probably just wait. And uh, I, I don't even think I talked about Perfect Days on the show. Um, I can go into that briefly. And also I saw his other film, uh, his documentary, Anselm, which is, a, like I said, his documentary about uh, the uh, this, re- this, uh, this artist and his uh, different art pieces and paintings uh, sort of... Um, as a as a companion piece to uh, the atrocities in World War II, and sort of just the the the, the way he goes about making his, all his uh, arts together, it, it's really great. It's a lot of there's a lot of long sequences in the film without dialogue. We're just seeing him uh, uh, in his natural habitat, in his like warehouse where he's uh, he'll like attach these brushes to um, or yeah he'll attach like these um, like trees and like brushes to uh, a canvas, and then with some sort of like glue. I, I don't know how it actually works because then what he does, he gets like a flamethrower, or not a flamethrower. It's like a I mean I guess it is a flamethrower. I don't know how powerful it actually is, but and then he'll light them on fire and, and burn them to a crisp. Uh, you know, uh, I don't get how they all don't burn off. I mean, I know that. I mean, they have, he has guys who are like immediately off to the side who um, you know spray with water, so the whole thing doesn't catch on fire. But it's, it's it's interesting. I just don't know what kind of glue would be able to, to keep that kind of stuff on. And here I am not silencing my phone again. People seem to only contact me when I'm in the middle of recording, but. It's a really fascinating documentary as well. I was unfamiliar with this artist previously, and just the way that we go about such... Uh, I mean, there's, like I guess before, there's long sequences without dialogue, so a lot of the more just straight observational moments um, are, are really, really uh, uh, let you just take in the imagery. This, the, I mean, the way the film opens up is, is really excellent. You have all these, like, uh, these... Uh, not paper mache, I don't even know how it's put together, but these, um, like, wedding dresses and different, like, things growing out of them, and there's, like, uh, no arms in some of them, no heads on, on other ones. It's, uh, it's great. And the way that um, vendors... Uh, uh, I, I don't know who actually was the DP on this film, because I don't uh, know if it was vendors directly, but a lot of the shot composition as well, and a lot of what they decide to keep in the frame is, is really excellent. Um... Can never find uh, Franz Lustig, who was a cinematographer on this. There's uh, yeah, it's a lot of great shots. I mean, if, if you watch the trailer, you can you can even see a lot of that. But just a lot of what they decide to keep in the frame, especially for a documentary, when it might be kind of trickier. But I think this is also it's not quite as observational um, as just kind of like running and gunning it. There is a lot of setup and a lot of uh, you know narration and a lot of specific shots where they'll have him do something, but then he'll narrate over it, which is great. Um, and also Franz Lustig also. Uh, was a DP on uh, Perfect Days as well, um, and I mean that that as well. It has a lot of these great kind of uh, I, I don't even want to say tracking shots. That's not the that's not the appropriate kind of term to use. But there are a lot of just great um, shots like the camera moving up and uh, uh, a lot of shots panning. That all looks great. I mean, Perfect Days has gotten I think a bit more attention. Um, it's been in comparison to uh, Jim Jarmusch's Patterson in terms of Perfect Days. You have this uh, this guy Hiryama. 
uh, played by Koji Yakucho, and he is uh, he he's a he's a traveling uh, janitor at a lot of these different uh, toilets in Tokyo. There's like uh, uh, different areas around the city. He lives a very um, mannered life. He lives a very he like he likes his routine, and you know he gets up in the morning and he takes care of his plants. He gets uh, coffee outside the vending machine. He enjoys listening to his music. He has all these cassette tapes, and he uh, you know he's he's not concerned with uh, a lot of material items. He's really just kind of you know he, he he collects you know he has books and stuff, and he he has his photography, but he gets into his own kind of daily patterns. And this is I mean. Uh, the reason why the Patterson comparison comes up is because um, it's a lot of the same sort of uh, mannerisms and a lot of the same kind of you know everyday kind of working man sort of this this existence of, of being content with where you are um, and enjoying your life uh, uh, and not needing to uh, relish in in being being able to be on your own but being uh, at one with yourself. I mean, in Patterson, you have. Um, uh, uh, Adam Driver, you know, he, he's in that film. He's living with his girlfriend, and you know, he's very happy living with her. He's very happy um, doing his poetry, and he drives the bus every day. And uh, you know, in that film, he's he's going through his head about like uh, you know, adding to like poems and stuff. And he enjoys talking to people and getting inspiration. And um, he he, just, he enjoys going to the pub and and having a pint and, and talking to his acquaintances. And, and here it's that same sort of thing as well. I mean, uh, here Yama is a a little bit more. Um, uh, not even closed in, but he's not as uh, you know he he says a lot less. He's he's not as interested in just kind of uh, nonsense interactions, but he does enjoy you know talking to uh, like this woman who works at a um, like a like a little um, like restaurant, and he and there's a guy who you know he knows what he likes to order, so he's like oh it's for a hard day's work or just something like that, and it's and it's great. I mean it's a film that it's intentionally repetitive, but the way that it goes about um, it is still so satisfying. Where there's not that you know I, I've I'd seen the trailer for this film. And there's not that big conflict in the film. In the trailer, they do show, um, like at, at some point, another character does enter into his life, and and they have a they have like um, a back and forth for a little bit. But that's like that really comes at like the middle of the film, like at least be like the second half, I would say. And that's a, that's a whole portion in and of itself, where it's sort of like you can take sections of this film and kind of isolate them on their own, and they come together to make this one kind of great um, piece. And then there's like a, there's like another great. Uh, see which towards the end of the film where he's playing this like game of uh, shadow tag with another character and they have a great uh, kind of little back and forth just, just little moments like that I mean this is this is I mean ideal cozy cinema man this is this is what I'm talking about on the show just just taking in these daily blessings and, and not taking anything for granted of just like oh you know uh, oh man I got a bad day or I don't want to go to work or this or that or I got to do this guy do that but it's sort, of, sort of like taking a step back and realizing you know where we are how fortunate we are to be alive and how the chances of us being alive are so um Slim, we have a better chance of playing the lottery. I mean, life is a lottery in and of itself, just sort of like, you know, being here, existing, and, and not taking things for granted. And that's not to say, you know, to just be happy all the time and just, oh, I know, I got no I got no issues in the world, this and that. I think that would be kind of, uh, that would be a, a bad counterpoint. It's, it's okay to be stressed, and it's okay to um, sort of be in situations where the there's an uncertainty to it all. But at the end of the day, when I see stuff like this, where I see this character who's, just enjoying, you know, taking the bath or is enjoying just going on these bike rides, um, is enjoying his photography and just, uh, you know, these, these brief interactions. And, and as well, I also got to say the, the architecture in the film as well is, is really excellent because the, the different toilets that he goes to, it's, it's fascinating, uh, the kind of the Japanese architecture. There's like these toilets that they, there's like a, there's like a light that, uh, not a light, it's like, um, it's like almost transparent glass, but they're colored and then you press a button and it becomes opaque. And that's just really cool. And um, there's like just such really interesting kind of like almost like art pieces of like bathrooms, man. They just show kind of the different uh, uh, sort of places that he's going to. And uh, you see that a lot of the camera movements are the same. So like you'll have it be like um, the camera going from like left to the right. You know, uh, I, I don't even want to say panning because I mean, somebody I was listening to something recently and, and shots that I would describe as panning. Somebody said it isn't correct. And I'm not so I'm not exactly sure about the terminology. And I'm not going to pretend like I know, you know, I'm some expert on, you know, film movements or anything like that i just know what i see and, and i see a lot of these same kind of movements and, and how they all work together but um i, I imagine i i don't know who released anselm as well i mean perfect days is a neon film uh they've been putting they've been distributing a lot lately um anselm i don't remember uh but because i but i imagine that that'll probably be i don't know how i can say as accessible to watch as it is uh for perfect days i've been hearing 
<clears throat> I've been hearing significantly less about Anselm, but I think that that is a solid film in its own right. I'm not comparing it to Perfect Days. I'm just saying that when you have a filmmaker like Vin Vendors who's still going after all this time, who is, I don't even know how old he is, but I mean, he's been making films for decades now, and he's still putting out not just films, but great films, is something to be truly admired. And I think that we're in such a good a good time to still be able to get films from Vim Vendors because, I mean, his, his filmography is already impressive as is with Wings of Desire and Paris, Texas. Um, and even though I'm not the biggest fan of Until the End of the World, um, I, I do think that it is an achievement. And it, it's an achievement in its own right and, and should definitely be watched. The, uh, the complete four hour, it's like four, four and a half hour version. I've, I've only seen that version. I've not seen the trimmed down one. But I'd be interested to compare it um, in terms of what was cut and what, what you know, what was left in. Uh, but it's just, it's just great, man. I think both these films are definitely on people's... At least Perfect Days is on people's radar, but Ansel maybe not as much. Um, I did see that... Actually, I'm looking here now that Yanis Films did distribute it, so I imagine that this will probably be on the Criterion channel at some point. Actually, I think it might honestly already be now I think about it. I want to actually check that, because I thought I saw them posting about it, but I didn't see... I didn't actually check if it was on there, so we're going to find out right now if it's on the Criterion channel. Um, Ansem is not. It is available to rent for $7. It's on, what the hell is this, Fandango Cinema? I, what, when the hell did Fandango get their own uh, streaming service? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> um, we still got to rent it, though. What the hell? It's uh, rent it from Fandango at home. I didn't even know Fandango was still going. God bless them, man. I wonder if... Uh, What's the other website? Not movie phone. That wasn't the website. Shit. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, well, it's available to rent. So, so you can go ahead and rent that if need be. Oh, uh, I think it's definitely worth watching. I wouldn't be surprised. It's got a Yanis Contemporaries uh, Blu-ray. Because a lot of those titles they've been distributing have been getting those Blu-rays. you got, like, uh, 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 slowly but but steadily, a lot of titles like Tori and the Kata and uh, A Fire, which I'm still going to pick up. It's a great film as well. Um, and, of course, I had to grab, like, The Innocent and EO. And uh, they put out that Link Shaw's documentary, which I wanted to watch. I didn't want to buy it, but uh, um, I know that it's streaming on the Criterion channel, so that'll be watched at some point. Um, and I don't know if I'd, I don't, you know, I, I may or may not buy this. I really don't know. I'd be more so to own it for the sake of, of being, of having access to it, you know. But um, I'm not, I, this isn't a film I'm, I'm, totally in a rush to, to rewatch. I think I'd be, I'd be watching again strictly for contextual sake. Um, if I was, you know, trying to, uh, uh see more art, uh, th this kind of art or this, um, uh, uh, context of like, you know, World War II sort of responses or response like World War II. And actually, uh, what I was talking about uh, a little while ago with, uh, um, Frederick Wiseman, his last documentary, Manu Placer, Lecture Croix, if I even said that right, I probably butchered that. But that is apparently also <laughs> available to rent on Fandango at home uh, for... It uh, doesn't say. Although I think that it's on PBS. I heard Brian Sauer saying that he watched it on PBS. I don't know if that's a free service or not or how much that is, but um, you can look into that if you're interested. But that will also probably be on Canopy at some point. So if you would rather just wait for that... Um, the next year prerogative, but Menu Placer is also a really excellent documentary of, of recent memory, so that will definitely, um, if you're interested in, I mean, Frederick Wiseman as well, actually, I'd be saying, he's, he's, he's in his 90s, he's still making these these great uh, documentaries. I, his his uh, more recent stuff, I'm not as knowledgeable on. I, I'm slowly making my way through his filmography, but what I have seen, primarily his older work from like the 60s to the 80s is, is kind of more uh, knowledgeable to me. And I think I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned The Garden on the, when I was talking about Menu Plus Sarah, but I've been having trouble finding that because, I mean, that's, that was, that's a whole conversation right there. But I found a link to watch it and then it didn't work for me. So um, I'd love to watch that documentary, but um, it's, that's going to take a little bit more time to kind of find a, uh, a way to um, get that. Because I think that's on the Internet Archive from where I checked, but it wasn't working for me, so... We'll have to see about that. That'll be watched at, at some point, and, and uh, I mean, hopefully put out at some point. I'm not holding my breath, because X had a whole release uh, issue history, and there's been controversy with getting it out, and this and that, but um, but either way, that'll that'll definitely not be leaving the conscious at any point, even if it remains in the subconscious. That'll that'll be there as well. Um, so, yeah. Let's get that here. Perfect Days, I think, actually just got announced for Blu-ray fairly recently. I think it might be a Region 2 one, from what I can remember, but uh, I'm not exactly sure about remembering that but um speaking of recent films uh one film i haven't been hearing a word about uh that i just kind of want to sing the praises on is and i don't remember where this film was from it's from a country that 
I am blanking on it. It is Bhutan. Uh, and this is a film written and directed by Paolo uh, Shoining Dorji, who is a filmmaker I'm not familiar with, and whose name I probably didn't say very well. Um, he has also previously directed... Oh, yeah, so he also has another film out this year, Tales of Taipei. And he had his previous film in 2019, Lunana, A Yak, a yak in the Classroom, both films. Tales of Taipei actually sounds like I may have heard some rumblings about it, but I'm not sure. Uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. I'm talking about this film. Uh, it's one of the best things I've seen this year. That uh, I guess it's technically 2023, but then it says here releasing May 2024, so maybe that's on video on demand. But his film, The Monk and the Gun... Uh, this is, I didn't realize that this was more of, I mean, I, I really knew almost nothing about it. I had seen the trailer and I remembered like a little bit about it, but I didn't realize just how funny and how uh, really kind of cozy in a way this film is too. You have this, uh, um, it is based on a true story, or at least has true events. I don't know how true the story actually is, but it's based on um, this area in Bhutan, which is finally it's just getting a democracy, and they're bringing in, like, they're finally getting internet, they're finally getting TV and stuff, and this is, like, in 2008, I believe, but um, there's this election that's going on in the town, this mock election, that to do, to do that, it will set up, like, the, uh, a real election, they're setting up uh, a democracy, but anyway, so... We have these uh, these monks that are living out there, and there's this one monk who uh, you know is saying that. And I apologize. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna remember the the characters names because I have no pictures here because I'm I I don't even, I don't want to give credit to the wrong um, actor, but um, he's saying that he needs he needs guns because he's going because uh, in time for the election. And at the same time, we have this American who's coming over there. Um, and he is a gun, um, enthusiast. I think he actually works for, like, a museum. Uh, I, I don't remember, but he, but he, he's very knowledgeable about guns. There's this gun there that he was, he knows, uh, he knows is there. It's like a civil, it's a gun from the Civil War. He says they've been looking for, for it for, like, 30 years, and this monk has. And basically, I don't want to give it all away, but it basically becomes something of a, of a, an adventure going across this countryside and they uh you know there's this great kind of bargaining back and forth where um you know he need you know he really wants to buy this gun he's a, he's very wealthy he can afford to spend thousands and thousands of dollars um but the monk's not interested he's just like i'm not you know you know you, you're, you're offering me too much this is ridiculous and um and uh at the same time though it's funny there's there's a whole running joke in the film where uh they have they just get tv so they're showing like the trailer for uh, uh quantum of solace the james bond film and the monk becomes interested in ak-47s and he's he wants an ak-47 and they have there's like one point they even hang the poster up it's it's very funny and uh it's just interesting out of, of all films like they go and choose that one which i guess hey 2008 it's, it's um the big film at that time uh or the you know coming out of that point but uh, it is funny. They they it's like a it's like a uh, the TV doesn't get the best reception, but they're just they're just sitting they're sitting there in this little like cafe, not even cafe, it's like a little like shop. They're drinking uh, like Coca Cola and uh, watching the trailer for Quantum of Solace. It, it's just great. But yeah, it's still an enjoyable film. And where it goes through in the third act, I thought was actually a really interesting way that they wrapped the film up because um, I think for a lot of them you kind of have an idea of where it's going, but then I'm thinking like there's no way they're gonna that's gonna be that's that's too obvious for it to go this way. And and what they decide to do is actually very um. Uh, dryly comedic uh, conclusion. They, there's just one reaction from a character that really kind of just sums it all up. And, and the way that it ends, it's sort of just like, well, that's the end of the story. And uh, it's just very funny. I, I don't know the accessibility on this film yet. I mean, it says uh, May 1st, 2024. But actually, I think it is, look at that, available to rent for only $6. And there are no reviews on Amazon. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, man, uh, no one's talking about this film, but this was fantastic. This was, this was such an enjoyable, totally cozy film that you got, it's got to be on your radar. Um, I don't know if you want to count this for 2023 or 24, but either way, for both lists, it would, it's one of my favorites of both these years. So check that out. The Monk and the Gun, it's, it's, it's too good to be left behind in the dust, but, uh, thank you for not leaving behind or, or, you know, thanks for sticking with me for another episode of Cozy Corner of Cinema. Keep an eye out for the next episode of Peephole Pictures coming this week. And uh, until then, thank you so much. Have a great day, a great night, evening, month, week, whenever you're listening to this uh, in the future, you know, at when it first comes out, it doesn't matter. Uh, just have a great one and uh, all the best. Thank you. Bye.